While they figure that out, let's talk about our production staff for tonight. First up, you know him as Team Liquid's International Relations Director. He's one hell of a translator, and we are proud to call him a member of our staff. He is Seeker. Casting with him tonight, on loan from Africa TV, former host of the ASS, or ASS as some might call it, the lovely Novea Star. And, of course, narrowly avoiding nuclear Armageddon in the south of Germany, our observer this evening, slightly radioactive, it's still everybody's favorite rockin' scientist, Marsh. But before I leave you all in their ever-so-capable hands, I want to let everyone know that StarCraft is our passion. We put together these events to bring together the community and to provide insight into the players and give an opportunity for you guys, the audience, to get to know them better. This is why that we've reached into our own pockets in order to put up $75 in seed money for the event. And we think these players just deserve so much more. So if you want to help out, go over to our Match Arena page and make a donation. Every little bit counts to help out these players. And if you don't have your own money to donate, then I highly recommend that you use someone else's money, and we have just the opportunity for that. We have two Macharino coupon codes, what's mine is mine, and breathe deep. If you use that code, one dollar will be donated in your name to the prize pool for these players. And if we reach our goal of two hundred dollars, you all will get an interview with the winner of this match, where you will have an opportunity to ask him your own questions. In our previous interviews, we have uncovered deep-rooted secrets such as why Classic hates Dark and an update to the Invasion Gumiho situation. But to tell you a bit more about that, here is our wonderful caster, Seeker, who will be t actually translating those interviews. <laughs> uh, thanks for that introduction, Felipe. Every time you, you introduce me, you always make me so, like, embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, but yes, thank you guys so much for being here. It's going to be an amazing uh, show match between two like, two amazing players. I mean, seriously, like, Innovation and Dark. Like, it just doesn't get any better than that. Oh, oh Dark, Dark is my favorite player because I'm Zerg, but I, I'm not, <laughs> I am not being biased because Innovation is such a challenge for him. I This could go either way, and I'm not rooting for either player. Well, it just so happens that Innovation is my favorite player. Oh, really? And I am going to be biased against Dark, so, so be oh. right for that. Well, then yeah. I might as well be biased against... Well, you <laughs> might as well be, right? 50-50. We might as right? well Right, we gotta this, even like, out the score here. Yeah, might as well make this the most biased cast in the world. Like, we're gonna be, you know, like those Twitch clips people put on Reddit? Right. You know, people are just gonna be like, alright, someone needs to shut Seeker up, because he is bashing Dark too much. And then, two <laughs> seconds later, someone needs to shut up. Because she's making innovation look like a fool. A fool! Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean... He's, he is very cute, too. I mean, I, I love that little Korean guy. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I, have, I yeah. have a little crush, you know. Koreans are cute. Oh, yeah. I think I'm Korean, too, so I think that's a win for me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it looks like we're getting started into these introductions here. we actually spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, playing as the Red Terran. We have Innovation. And his opponent, the Zerg player, who was the runner-up in the 2016 WC. It is dark. I don't know about you, Novea, but I am really happy that the first map is Abyssal Reef. Because, like, this this map it just produces the most fun games. Yeah, I think so too. It's actually really good for Terran though. I think that, you know, because of the grounds, there's really low grounds and really open for drops, just like a bunch of different levels. And, you know, getting that third down is really easy to do on this map, you know, with drop pressure. No, I absolutely agree. And I'm glad you brought up pressure because, you know, we've seen... <coughs> oh, <laughs> I just started coughing and choking, got too excited. Oh man, I gotta a... breathe. Yeah. 
<laughs> we gotta breathe. Gotta look at to use those breathing techniques, right? The ones that we used up in the polygon casting practices. Yeah, we do actually see a reaper <coughs> coming in here now. We do have a queen com coming filtering in, so that uh, reaper actually is backing off. He saw the queen. He did get a scout out with it, though. He was able to see that his opponent did go for an expand. And we do have the counterlings coming in, kind of trying to pick off maybe that reaper or kind of delay the expansion, it looks like he's coming in to do, which is really typical of Dark to do. So earlier, what I was trying to say about the drop is that we know innovation is a very like a per he's a player who favors drop styles. He's very good with those multi pong prong aggressions. He's really good at distracting his opponent. He's really good at attacking from one area while also dropping in another area. And then when you think you've cleaned up two, yeah, innovation definitely. Innovation is multitasking is amazing. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the builders we're seeing here. Uh, first off, from Dark, uh, we know that he likes to play greedy. We know that he likes to drone up heavily, but we're not seeing, we're not necessarily seeing a quick third hatchery from him yet. He was waiting until his speed finishes. Now he's going to chase down this Reaper. The Reaper's going to die, but Innovation knows that the third base is not up and running for Dark yet, so he should be. Yeah, but it's probably a perfect time for him to, you know, probably put it down now. And it looks like that's what he's gearing up to do right now to go for that third after the Reaper died. Absolutely, and you, actually, Dark is actually running. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to do a bit of a Ling run by here or be able to see if his opponent's getting the expansion. But this is another part on this map where you, you can't actually wall off the complete area. Um, so he's going to be able to come in, at least get a scout in, see if he has a third base. See, he's going to be able to see these Hellions as well. And, you know, this whole area wasn't walled off, so he was able to get a lot of information from that. Ooh, that actually really hurt Dark, though, losing six Lings like that and getting nothing in return. Yeah. This allows innovation to move out with his Hellions, and now he has complete map control over the situation. And he has actually the, he has a Banshee follow-up. And the tech lab on the starport is very common right now for Terran players, but they normally do a double Raven follow-up instead of a Banshee. So I like innovation switching things up here, trying to play a little unorthodox. And as we mentioned before, these players are very familiar with each other's styles. So I'm sure innovation, you know, during his downtime was trying to figure out what can I do to really throw my opponent off this game. Yeah, I feel like Dark, you know, he's so used to this happening with the Hellions and, you know, he's always getting in and he always is able to do drone damage like he's doing right now. We're actually barbecue happening oh my God. drones. Oh my goodness. And the roaches finally are out. They're going to be able to clean it up, but he lost so many workers there. That was 12 drones killed there, Novaya. Oh, yeah. Okay, remember that what hurt. I said? Like, Dark likes to play, play greedy, but he didn't grab a third hatchery quickly this time, so... Losing 12 workers hurts a lot. It really does if, right now. If you look at the worker count, it's 41 SCVs and 27 drones. Uh, he actually has two queens in the Overlord here. It's uh, pretty interesting that he's doing. He's probably going to come in and try to use those to pick off anything in the air. Or maybe yeah, just to I, heal units. I, we do have the Banshee. We're not going to have Overseers yet, I don't believe. Yeah, he's bringing that queen, those, those queens over in the Overlord, which is slow off creep. So he's going for a timing attack uh, with this army right now, and in order to be able to successfully do that, uh, and, and of course he needs the queens to fight off the Banshee as well. So I like what Dark is doing here, but Innovation has scouted this. Innovation has plenty of time to respond to this. Let's see what Innovation's decision here. How is he going to block this attack from Dark? Because he does have a scary amount of army at Innovation's doorstep right now. Yeah, and the corrosive vials are going to go off right on this bunker. He's going to be able to kill a couple of SCVs, and he's actually going to be able to delay the mining time of innovation. So he's making a pretty decent comeback just for what he's doing, but he's not going to be able to really push through here. And the siege tank is out here now for innovation, so I don't see how. Mm. He has nothing that can kill this tank other than rep. Yeah, and just not too many Ravengers. The Queens are actually taking damage here. One Queen going down. We're not going to be able to use any of the Transfuses, even though he's stopping Innovation from doing any mining. This is just not looking good for Dark. And we have the first GG. Innovation takes the first win in this best out of seven. After that initial pressure from Innovation with his 12, I'm sorry, not 12 Hellions, with his Hellions and Dark lost 12 drones. Yeah, it was six Hellions. Dark lost 12 drones. He did not replenish those lost drones. He went no. for an all in. He, he's, yeah. like, he's like, I have a late third hatch. I'm down in worker count. There's no way I can play catch up because he's already got CC on the way. I'm very behind. I might as well just go for it and try to kill him off. And Innovation's like, I know that that's the only option you have left. Yeah, so he got that siege tank out in the perfect time, and that just held him back. I mean, with once that tank got in and the queens went down, it was 
it was done for it from there. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, it was it was just it was a shame that Dark lost those twelve drones because he was doing very good so far. Like he shut down the Reaper Scout and then he had well he lost those six links, so that hurt him a lot. He 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 lost map control. But he was in an okay position. He wasn't anywhere near out of the game yet. But once those twelve drones died, Dark was left with two options, either play catch up or go mm -hmm. for the all in. That was it. There was nothing else he could do. And innovation knowing that, just decided to stay home, play defensively, and just completely read his opponent 100%, knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, I really want to see... I'd really like to see, you know, uh, in the future, you know, how he's going to be able to really counter against this, because it's like he's not getting the roaches out fast enough, and it's like these Hellions have always been doing damage. Like, the, these Hellion pushes that Innovation likes to do are just... They're so strong, and he's really good at coming in at the perfect time before there's units. I think that's just, it's just because both players understand this matchup so well, and they know exactly what they need to be able to execute the perfect build order slash perfect attack timing. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.